Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another video. Now Android Oreo update is here for the Sony Xperia XZ. So I've got the XZ right over here. This phone is from last year, 2016. So Sony has finally released the Oreo update for this phone and in this video I will be updating this phone and showing you different features that come with the Oreo update. So as you can see the download size is about 1.2 gigabytes and it includes reminders, Xperia actions, app shortcuts and smart text selection, autofill. But what I'm really interested in seeing is some improvements in the camera and especially some improvements with the battery life because the battery life on this phone kind of sucks. Alright, so let's go ahead and start the download process. Alright, press continue. Install now. And it should take about 15 to 20 minutes from now on. Alright guys, the update process is now complete. We are on Android 8 Oreo on the Sony Xperia XZ. So let me go to settings and show you the Android version. But first off, you can see this drop down menu is slightly different. This gear icon, if you remember, used to be here on the top. Now they've moved it to the bottom here. And you can see this completely new redesigned settings menu. It looks exactly the same like it does on the Sony XZ Premium. So let's scroll down and go to uh, system and tap on about phone as you can see android 8.0.0 first november 2017 android security patch level and yes this is android oreo all right guys you can see it is now 14th of december and so one full day has passed since i have updated this phone and meanwhile this thing has got another update so if we go to about phone you can see now Sony has updated the Android security patch level to 1st December 2017 and that's really good. Alright guys, it has been about 24 hours since I've upgraded this phone to Android Oreo and it performs great. The performance is top notch, it does not heat up or anything. And yes, the battery life is also slightly better than it was on Android Nougat. So I'm on 66% and it has been about... Uh, it has been about 14 hours since I've unplugged this phone and 2 hours 42 minutes of screen on time and this battery backup is not great but it is still better than if what I was getting on Android Nougat. And yes inside the display settings we still have double tap to wake and double tap to sleep in the launcher settings. So double tap to sleep and double tap to wake and this is one feature I really miss on newer Sony smartphones. I wish Sony would incorporate that. Alright so let me talk a bit about the new features that I was able to discover on this phone. So first off picture in picture mode in Google Maps. So first off you'll need to launch Google Maps. Alright now you can see navigation is running in Google Maps and obviously I'm not gonna zoom out because it will reveal my location on YouTube. Anyways just press the home button and you'll see picture-in-picture -picture mode in Google Maps and how cool is that and on Android Nougat it does not work so Google Maps is running here press the home button and you'll straight away return to home screen without picture picture-in-picture -picture mode but on Android Oreo you can see your maps is running and you can continue to do other work meanwhile the maps will keep on running on the side of your screen and just tap it again and it'll go full screen back again. Next feature I'm going to talk about is called App Shortcuts. Now App Shortcuts debuted with Android Nougat but unfortunately Sony did not enable them because their launcher does not support it. But what App Shortcuts does is if you long press and hold an icon and this works only with compatible apps so for example Chrome if you long press it you'll see this context menu so for example Normally, if you want to go into incognito tab, you'll open Chrome, you'll press this button, and you'll go in new incognito tab. Now, there's a more simpler method. You just press and hold this and tap new incognito tab. And for Gmail, if you long press, you can directly go to compose and start building your email. All right, so the next new feature we have here is called Xperia Actions. So let's go to settings scroll down here and tap on assist and here we have xperia actions now, now you can use xperia actions to customize your phone settings for different circumstances for example i will explain to you this good night mode so we have here a couple of settings like turn on airplane mode turn on do not disturb 
uh, adjust the screen brightness and optimize the battery that is turn on stamina mode so you can select whatever you want so i've selected do not disturb mode i've selected screen brightness should be set to zero and turn on stamina mode during the night time so this will happen on all the days from 12 am to 9 25 am so at this point of time the phone will be silent the battery will be conserved because stamina mode will turn on automatically and uh, let's go ahead and turn this so now you can see the screen has dimmed it is turned on though so this is what Xperia Actions does and the phone will automatically so if I don't turn it off the phone will turn this feature off automatically at around 9:25 a.m. or whatever time you set your phone to and I think this is quite useful I actually use Xperia Actions I have it disabled now because I'm filming a video so I'm really happy with the phone's performance in Android Oreo I feel the performance is much better now compared to Android Nougat but where this phone gets left behind is multitasking as you can see 2.2 gigabytes of RAM is already in use and you can see not many apps are running here in the background so 2.2 gigabytes of RAM on an average meanwhile if you compare this with Android Nougat on the Xperia XA1 Plus about 2 gigabytes of RAM is being used on this one and, and the XA1 Plus does have 4 gigabytes of RAM compared with 3 gigabytes on the Xperia XZ so I think that extra gigabyte of RAM does make a difference so here you can see Android OS takes more memory here on Android Oreo than it does on Android Nougat. Same with Android system. Alright, so I want to see if there's any improvement in the camera UI if Sony has updated their camera UI like they did on the XZ Premium. So let's launch the camera. Superior Auto. And this is the video mode. So 4K is still not a part of this menu it's still the separate app over here and that kind of sucks come on Sony you have to improve this come on you can see all these additional steps required and now we have 4k video recording and this should be included in the menu over here anyways doesn't seem anything new here in the camera app and let's see the manual mode you have shutter speed change the shutter speed and change the ISO but as you can see the shutter speed goes to automatic if you change the ISO and if you change the shutter speed ISO will be automatically reset and this is one limitation on this phone but here on the XZ premium you can set the shutter speed and the ISO together so you can see manual shutter speed to one second and you can change the ISO after that but you can't do that on this phone that kind of sucks come on Sony you have to make these improvements on your previous flagship phones and no nope, burst mode is not available when you press and hold the camera shutter button meanwhile it is available on the XZ premium so you press and hold the sh camera shutter button you can see it will capture 100 shots in burst mode but burst is available on the XZ it's available as a separate camera app it's called time shift burst and again this is a separate camera app inside the camera so you have that so there you go now you can select the best shot as you like and one last thing I dislike about this Android Oreo update is the way these folders work now previously as you can see on Android 7 if you open a folder the icons are right here on the bottom and it's very easy to access them but with Android Oreo, once you open the folders, the icons are way over there on top and you can see it's very difficult for me to access them using one hand. So I have to do this in order to access those icons and that's kind of annoying. I would like Sony to move these icons down here so that they are easier to access with one hand. And I can see this being a problem with some users. They like to use their phone with one hand but because of this, I have ultimately stopped using folders on my uh, Android launcher just place the icon directly on the home screen okay so one last thing I would like to point out is that super vivid mode on the Xperia XZ only works in certain applications so it's not system wide unlike it is on the Sony Xperia XZ premium so if you select super vivid mode on the Sony XZ premium it will work across all Android system so even if you're using apps like Instagram super vivid mode will be turned on so you'll get those rich 
deep colors and you can see the color saturation has changed but on the Sony XZ it works only in certain applications like if you're watching a video on YouTube, watching video in VLC player or the default video player of the Sony XZ and if you're taking a look at some pictures in the default album. So it's not system wide so even if I turn it off you'll see there will be no change in the color saturation in the Android system. Alright guys, thank you for watching this video. Do stay tuned for more videos like these. Follow me on Facebook and on Instagram. And links to the uh, themes that I usually use is down in the video description. So do check the video description. So thanks for watching guys and do stay tuned for more videos like these. And I'll see you guys next time.